Hello again everybody and a very warm welcome back to episode 2 of the Aerosoft Twin Otter tutorial series uh, that we're doing for Microsoft Flight Simulator. I hope you've enjoyed the first one, getting the engines all started. We're here still on stand at Skiathos. Um, we're going to work through taxi, takeoff and initial climb out for this next video episode. So I hope you enjoy it, I hope you're enjoying the series so far. Make sure you hit like and subscribe down below. As always, all of the links are in the description down below as well. So if you've not already checked this fantastic add-on out, then be sure to go and check out the Aerosoft website. So we have left the previous episode at Ready to Taxi. Uh, the Metar at the moment is VFR here at Skiathos and uh, Nil Wind with good visibility. We're going with QNH1013 using a uh, Floyd's Cloud preset at the moment as well. We can go ahead and get rid of the brakes. If you've not already done so, get the prop RPMs onto max as well. Make sure they're on the increase. And we can go ahead and apply some power. Check the brakes. You can see on the actual yoke, we're nose wheel steering on the ground. Now, of course, Microsoft Flight Simulator loves to put things in the way, like the pushback driver and all that sort of stuff. Uh, but we're going to pretend for the purposes of this tutorial that they're not there. And we're going to taxi towards runway 19, ready departure over the beach. So we'll swing left. Now, real world pilots of the Twin Otter have helped create this fantastic add-on for the sim. And they've described it as taxiing exactly as she does in real life, which is really great for feedback from them. So you can expect it to wallow on the ground here, like it's doing at the moment, and lean almost in those tighter turns. Okay, so we're backtracking on the runway here at Skiathos. In the overhead panel, we've already turned the strobes on and we've turned anything else that we might want on as well, uh, on or auto, as required for ourselves. And we're going to backtrack on the runway here. Takeoff checks. Controls full and free, so full left, full right, and we want to go up and down as well, check in. Controls are full and free in every direction, effectively. Then we're going to line up with the runway, get the nose wheel nice and straight, set brakes to on. So, our brakes are on. Next thing we want to do, engine controls, we want to set the torque to 30 PSI. Then we're going to let the engine T's and P's stabilise. Now it's a bit difficult, the likes of myself, I've only got a single axis throttle. So I have to kind of judge it, and usually there's a bit of wiggling involved, but there's about 30. Let the T's and P's stabilise. Then we slowly add power to 50 torque, and we get the brakes off. Uh, and I've actually got a bit of a crosswind to play with today as well. So there's 50 PSI, power set, and speed to life. So V1 rotate about 75 knots, we've got that now. So gently back on the stick and away we go. Climb and accelerate to 100 knots, there's the indicated airspeed, it's about 100 now in fact. And we climb at 100 knots with flaps up. Flaps go away and at 500 foot, which we've just passed, we want the prop percentage lever 
to go to 100, uh, back to 75%. Now, you can see here it's at 100. Now, this is where you can get a good view like this. You need to lean down. Ideally, you'd get two um, controls and you want to bring it almost, almost the way back till it locks there. And bizarrely, that is about 75, as you can see there. Prop RPM for engine one and two, about 75. And you also want to power back to 40 torque. And ideally, you do that at the same time. Power back, 40 torque, and prop to 75% lever back. And then we just climb away. You can hear the different torque reaction and the different sounds change. Okay, so let's say, for example, we're going to level off here at about 2,000 or so feet. And you guys want to use autopilot or whatever else. If you've got a pre-planned route added in, you can go ahead and turn the autopilot on and turn the nav on. By the way, you'd have probably turned on your transponder as well, so do bear that in mind. Controls wise, let's hide the yoke. Here is your heading bug for the autopilot. We'll climb to about 3000 as a bit of an example here. And we're going to fly, say, 150. You can either use the autopilot selection knob over here. Or you can use the one up here. Turn autopilot on. Set 3000. Press alt. Press up if you're still climbing. But we're to recognise we're at the, our altitude already. And if you want to fly to the headings you prescribe, you click heading. And she's rolling. There we go. And that's it. If we want to turn a bit more, we can ask her to turn a bit more. So let's go 010-ish degrees. If you're in nav, you can tune nav mode and just turn it on. And fly as per your planned routes. We do 010 there for a little example. Uh, what about MDBs, PORs, that sort of thing? There's your OBS needles, there's your ADF, and down here you've got your ADF frequency selection. So we can go ahead and tune 326. Three, two, six. turn it on. And it's now active. That's tracking the Skiathos NDB. The Skopilos VOR can be done by entering it into the VOR or the VLOX section of the comms area. Now we can press the button, change it across. It's just the Bendix stuff that you might be familiar with in other GA aircraft in the sim. 113 40. And then we can just press the V to transfer it across. And now the VOR is active. So we can actually fly radials and all that sort of stuff now, outbound radials to that if we wanted to as well. So that's how you do that. Or you could just enjoy VFR. And you can enjoy the wonderful views all outside the aircraft. If you want to set custom views, do check out my custom views tutorial on the channel as well and you'll be able to find lots of different ways to be able to set views in the Aerosoft CRJ. One thing I really like in here, it increased by the way, you can turn the landing lights and uh, the taxi lights off according to the real pilot that uh, I was speaking to. And uh, let's drop into the rear cabin. Look at this, so good. Is the door. You can click that. <laughs> so fantastic. Love it. And we've opened up the uh, parachute drop door. And then we can close it once we've debunked everybody.
You can fly approaches, back courses, via the autopilot as well. And you can fly ILS approaches too. Uh, by tuning the VLOC mode, and you can turn Nav 1 on, you can fly towards VORs um, and all that sort of stuff too. So experiment with it, have a little go, see what you think, and uh, you'll find little things that you can pick up yourself. And you'll be like, you know what, really enjoy that. If in doubt, turn the autopilot off and fly it yourself. One of the best ways to fly this is manually. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. Be sure to hit like and subscribe down below to the channel. Share your thoughts in the comments below. And I hope to see you check out the next couple of videos, uh, including how to get her down on the ground. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you for the next one. Take care.